Hi, I'm Linda. And I'm Craig, and we're from True North Genius Alignment Coaching. And today we've got a question for you. Is there really more to life or is this as good as it gets? One of the most common questions I see adults asking friends, family, even clients sometimes ask us that question, don't they? Definitely. And the truth of the matter is that there is more to you and there is more to life as human beings. In fact, we're expansive by nature. But we've learned certain things and strategies and ways of living and being in the world um, that are largely about survival. And so whilst we end up becoming great at paying bills usually and, and covering our bottom line, we also end up arriving at this point in our lives where we're sort of like, God, is, is this all, all there is? You know, and, and that can be seriously disheartening for people. Absolutely. I don't know if you remember, but I remember being a kid and thinking, I can't wait to grow up because I'll be able to do all the cool things, you know, all the things I want to do. No one's going to be able to tell me what to do or, you know, I'm just going to I'm going go to go and work and make money, but then I'm going to go and do really cool things. And then it ended up being, you know, the things of life, like do I have enough money to cover the bills before I go do the fun things or uh, making sure that all everyone else is taken care of before I get to do something that I would love to do and, you know, putting on the responsible adult hat. And it seemed like uh, the adulting wasn't as much fun as it could have been when, when you're a kid looking at the adults able to do something without someone telling them what to do. But actually you end up telling yourself what to do uh, based on some weird concepts and beliefs that we take on, don't we? Yeah, yeah. and what, what we see happening is then that people um, put all the power in their conditions and circumstances and they, they feel as an adult that um, being a responsible adult is about handling the conditions, making sure that they have top priority in life. And then that maybe one day after everything's handled and everybody else is sorted, I can get on with doing what it is I'd love to do. The problem is that by the time you get to that point, knowing what's really true for you, what you'd really love to do can be the tricky bit. Yeah. Or you've run out of time, money, resources, energy, your body's given up, whatever it is, that can happen too, can't it? Yeah. So, yeah, we sort of put everything on the back burner for this one day in the future that seems to never come along. And then when one day come, it does come along, we aren't able to bring it to fruition. That's a that's a little bit of a sad state of affairs. And, and even if you are in the throes of living life and just getting things done, uh, we've all got this little restless part of us underneath that wants something more. Uh, and we may not exactly know what that is at this point in time, but we know we want something better than what we've currently got. Now, part of that is your inherent expansive nature wanting you to look for something more, even if you've got lots of cool stuff going on in your life. Uh, and part of that is that you've got these elements of you that you have never, ever explored. And in some sort of weird little esoteric way, they're tapping you on the shoulder constantly saying, hey, I'm here. Can you come and find me now? And they're keeping you in this semi-restless state as well. Uh, and, and often we resolve that. We, we find other ways to resolve that tension, don't we? Mm. we? We get into all sorts of things. Yeah, whether it's, you know, drinking, uh, binge Netflix watching or YouTube videos or whatever it is. Or working harder to get more money so you might be able to go on the next level thing or buy a bigger house or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But they're really satisfying, are they? No, I mean, we can create great results and that sort of thing. But what you'll notice is until you really align with those things that are true for you and seeking expression through you, um, those the, the joy in those results that you create can be very short lived, leaving you feeling kind of empty, like something's still not, something's still not right, something's still missing. So the, the thing is, we, we come to a point where we, um, through our our practicalities in life. We learn to be very logical about everything. We learn to figure everything out. And that's what we believe we need to do in order to, to be successful in life. And we become good at figuring stuff out. But there's a real serious limitation if that's our primary go-to when it comes to living our fully expressed version of life. Mm. And one of those problems is where you're coming from when you're figuring it out. 
Because when you're figuring something out, you're actually in your problem solving orientation. And in the problem solving orientation, neurologically, that fires up a part of you, which is actually the fight, flight, freeze response. Uh, so it's part of your sympathetic nervous system. It's about survival. And you can't actually see too much beyond solving immediate problems. And you can't create a life by solving problems. That's just that's just not going to happen from there because you're not allowing yourself to have a, a much more expansive open lens of, of being able to see those things that are true for you. Because, you know, deep in your heart, you may have some sort of creative expression that you'd really love to get into, whether it's maybe becoming a comedian or script writing or artistry or, or um, makeup and hair. I don't know what it is, but there will be something potentially where you want to really get your teeth into something creative and expressive. Uh, but if you're in survival mode and it's all about paying the bills or keeping the kids in line or your spouse in line or whatever it is, uh, then you can't see any of that stuff. It's not available to you. And you're missing out on a very big part of who you really are and therefore have this constant little nagging, I'm not being satiated in this life. Is this all there is? So how do we move beyond that? How do we, you know, we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. These skill sets um, that we've developed, the, the ability to figure stuff out and to make it happen is is something it's it sort of forms part of our toolkit but um there's more and how do we access more you know beyond that reasoning mind so that we can uh, get our neurology working more creatively you know working in that that other area of the brain that's about creativity and seeing a far more broad vista when it comes to our access to different information, higher level information, and a much bigger outcome when we're, we're looking to create those things or an outcome that's really more aligned with the truth of who we are and what, what it is we're seeking deep down, you know, for a really um, deeply meaningful engagement in our own lives. Absolutely. Well, well, obviously, if we're talking neurologically, we need to employ a part of it, our neurology, that it's actually that calm side of us, that 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 creative side, which is you know, primarily our parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, a lot of this vagal nerve theory that you've he probably heard about recently. These sorts of things. Uh, you don't even need to know what they are or how they work, but you just you will be familiar with what it's like when you're calm and relaxed or creative or in a flow state, as opposed to trying to get stuff done and 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 trying to get to the next post. So hopefully you can have a bit of downtime or relax or put yourself in front of the television for a while. There's a difference between those two orientations. So one of the things is it's really easy to recognize is that. It's beyond the logical. It's beyond the reasoning. We go into a more relaxed state of thinking. So things like daydreaming, for example, or even playing around a bit creatively, like you might not have picked up a packet of pencils or a paintbrush for a really long time, but it may be something that you are open to exploring and just get out a pad and start sketching or throwing some paint around on a canvas and just see what happens. That's actually very powerful for reacquainting yourself with that part of your neurology. Uh, and, and down the track, you can start to employ some intuitive practices or some visualization or imagination exercises that can help to bring you into that state of being as well. And from there, you get a lot more access to information about things that are true for you as the unique individual that you are. Great, great practices, those. I mean, there might be a, there might be some dust on the guitar that's been in the corner of the room for some time. Pick that up and have a bit of a strum, a bit of a play. So they're, they're all ways of just starting to get your neurology, neurology kind of working in a different way, reacquainting with that. You probably haven't been acquainted with that since you were a kid. And so coming back to that, a lot of us think that our, our imagination is just, it's playtime, you know, it's mucking around, it's wasting time. Um, it's got nothing to do with our viability. So it's unimportant compared to the bills and what we need to do to make sure they're paid. Truth of the matter is that it's, it's through the use of our imagination that we get to discover what life can really be like. And then this is the life that, that, you know, we'd really love to have and experience in the imaginations where it's at. So these are some of the practices that you, you're not wasting time with when you're engaged in them, but rather you're flexing that muscle and coming back to that, the, the use of that aspect of yourself. You've got it. It's just not being used potentially for many years. And just like anything you may not have done for a long time, 
initially it can feel awkward. It can feel a little like, oh, I don't even know what to do with this guitar or this pencil or whatever. Uh, and, and it's just a matter of just being a little bit persistent, a little bit resilient in the face of it, be with the tension of it and just, just allow yourself to play. Uh, if you started going back to the gym after a long time, you wouldn't rush over and start picking up the 100 kilos of, of weight on a bar. You might want to start with two or three kilos and just a little bit of time in there to get yourself going and get get an emotion happening both in your neurology and in your physiology to match that and then build over time to create that skill back up again. And while you're doing that, while you, you, you're, you're playing in that realm, and I say playing in a, you know, um, we know what playing is. It's not mucking around. It's not time wasted, but it is playful. Um, and it's childlike. And, and an attribute of um, us being in that realm is there's an innocence to that. And when I say innocence, again, really powerful state to be in because what innocence allows us to do is let all of our, our belief structures, our concepts about the way it is, um, everything we kind of know about, hey, this is this is how that works and blah, 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 just fall away for a little while. Well, you know, we suspend it. We let it be there, but we suspend it and we allow ourselves to go into that state of innocence. And we can do that with and contemplate, well, what might life look like if if it was next level for me with regard to feeling really meaningful really fulfilling um what might that be you know so we allow that question to kind of be pondered at, at, in those moments when we're engaging in those artful or creative um activities and and we're, we're in an innocence we're not trying to figure it out we're, we're looking to receive some information about what that might look like or what what might I, I be able to start with or move in the direction of or take some form of action in relation to. And what you'll notice is when you suspend your need to really figure it all out and crunch the figures, you, you'll just notice that you'll start to give yourself access to new information that was always there, but you it was unavailable to you while you were in that figuring out mode. So innocence, creativity, imagination, and some sort of curiosity about what life could be like if it was the life that I'd really love it to be at this point in, in, in the time, in time, you know. Mm, absolutely. And really, when you look at it, you've got nothing to lose because being in a bit of a creative mode, imagination, daydreaming or whatever, puts you in a very uh, much more relaxed state. You know, so at, at worst case scenario, you get to de-stress your body a little bit. You get to give it a chance to breathe and catch up with all the busyness of life. Uh, and a, a on, on, on top of that, the better outcome becomes that you actually are flexing that muscle. It's something that, as Craig said, it gives you uh, continual access actually to much higher level information than what you've learned from the past. So you're not just living life over and over and over again. So we've got a little challenge for you this week and we'd love to see how you go. Um, spend a bit of time in that mode, that creative mode, daydreaming, whatever it is, just allowing yourself to relax into a more creative state of being and then just notice, first of all, how you feel and second of all, what comes about as a result of doing that. And we'd love to hear from you. You can pop it in the comments uh, and then make sure you also hit subscribe so that you can catch up with something else next time we get, we're get we on. We'd love to hear. Brilliant. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, all the best with it. And yeah, do let us know how you get, how you get on and uh, and give yourself that time to, to really... Um, engage and immerse in these things so that you can open up to receiving new information and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next video great see you then bye